Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the feature race and the DRF race of the day for Saturday, June the 15th. Well, it's race number eight at Churchill Downs, the grade two $600,000 Stephen Foster for handicap horses. Got a nice deal going on. This race, I believe, is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Breeders' Cup World Championships right around the corner. If you visit breederscupshop.com and spend over 30 bucks, you get two free Breeders' Cup Santanita World Championship glasses. Enter code DRF to pack to get that deal. Let's look at the field for the Stephen Foster. You can access free formulator pass performances on the Race of the Day event page mm -hmm. at DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one thirst for life. And Wes Hawley's done a really nice job with this source. He took him for $50,000 in 2017. He's made about 210000 with him. He got him back on track last time out at Churchill Downs. And that kind of gigantic time form U.S. Raw figure, yeah. but I just didn't love the field he beat. Yeah, I mean, he, I thought he ran fine, and I thought he also got a really good trip in that race. I mean, you know, the fact that he had to alter course off the inside at about the eighth pole, and then was still able to run down um, American Anthem, you know, he, he ran well in that race. He got a 99 buyer for it. As you say, uh, Hawley claimed this horse for 50. He's won four races with him since he took him, all allowance races, but he's graded stakes placed. Um, you know, his last race is the best he's run. Does that race really make him a big contender in this race? You know, I personally don't think it does. I don't love this horse at a mile and an eighth either, but he ran well last time. And he does love Churchill Downs. He's four for seven over the Churchill Downs main strip. He is three for 15 everywhere else. The distance, though, is a question mark. The two is Rated R Superstar, and although Rated R Superstar has won at this distance, I think you and I have always liked him going shorter. He's six years old now, and he pulled off an upset win in the Essex. Two starts back. Maybe it was the sloppy track that did him in last time out at Oakland. Those were very very testing conditions. Yeah, I mean, maybe he just doesn't really love a wet track. Um, you know, he's also not really this kind of horse, I don't think. I mean, he'll show up and he'll run his race every time, but he needs a big pace in front of him um, to come running at the end, and he's really going to need this race to fall apart. Well, he him. might need a big pace. According to Timeform US, this is a red bar scenario in Timeform US parlance. That means it should be a fast pace up front, and leading the way, we expect after the first half mile, is the three runaway ghost who looked like he was on his way to the Kentucky Derby in 2018 after winning the Grade 3 Sunland Derby. He certainly had the points, but unfortunately for runaway ghost in the connections, he missed time after that race with an injury. He's come back rolling, winning three of four, but the one time he got tested for class, right. he got beat. Yeah, that's the big problem with him. Um, you know, he also got tested for class really once as a two-year-old, and he got beat 100 lengths that day, too. So I guess there's a real question of, you know, how much quality he really has, but he does have speed. He's a pretty nice horse. Um, I don't think a fast-paced scenario would do him any favors in here because he's got to run the race of his life to beat this field. A fast pace would help his next-door neighbor, the number four, Seeking the Soul. And you know I'm the president and perhaps yeah, only member the of the Seeking the Soul fan club. He's banked $2 million in his career. I liked what he did in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. I liked what he did in the Pegasus World Cup. I was excusing the Clark handicap. I think they ran him back way too quick off the Breeders' yeah. Cup Dirt Mile. And I gave him a shot in the Dubai World Cup, and he just really didn't fire. And I gave him a shot in the alley. Sheba, and maybe that race just didn't set up for him, A, yeah. and B, he's not the kind of horse McKinsey is, so I'm probably getting off of him way too early. Yeah, he fits him? well with why these horses, off? and he's going to get a pace. Yeah, why? You, I don't know why you would Because I want him to win. Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm going to use him. He's not my top pick in the race, but I'm definitely using this oh, horse. Yeah. I thought he ran well last time in the Oshiba. He was never going to win that race, um, but you know, you got to come wide off that second turn there. I thought he raced on pretty well at the end. I Listen. I don't like this horse as much as you do, but he's really good, and he fits really well in this race. Very, very consistent. You know we'll make his run. He's going to need a trip. He's the kind of horse yeah, that that's true. if you throw a straw in his path, they'll probably that's find true. one better. But I'm a big fan, and because I'm off, folks, you better get on. The five is Alcatan. This is a beautifully bred son of Tappet, and he did some okay things for Chad Brown, but he could win for Chad. Yeah. Sent over to Dan Pites, real un underrated trainer. Yeah, very much so. This horse has won two in a row. He's found himself. He looked good at Churchill Downs, beating a pair of next out winners. But let's be honest, he's got to run the race of his life by far to win. Listen, they're asking an awful lot of this horse for his third start back off the layoff. Um, but what you like about him is, as you say, he's really well bred. He was all potential for Chad as a two year old. I mean, this horse ran really well in both of his starts. Even as Remsen was not a bad performance. Unfortunately for him, he only managed to get one race in as a three year old. So obviously, something happened. 
He's come back and he's looked really good in his two races so far for Pikes. He's got to go a mile and an eighth now against, you know, much better horses. But this horse can run a little bit. He's a huge price near Dan. I, I would be a little surprised if he could win. I'm using this horse underneath, though. If I told you last year at this time that the number six gift box would be one of the top handicap well. horses in the country in 2019, you probably would have laughed in my face. Not because he didn't have any sort of ability. It's just that he could never get over the hump at short prices and optional claiming races for the great Chad Brown. Yeah. But let me tell you something. These connections, Ronus Racing, John Sadler, they are very sharp. They bought this horse privately, two big wins, including the prestigious Big Cap. And well, he got beat last time out in the Gold Cup by Vino Rosso, an okay Todd Pletcher horse. Fine. I thought he did a lot of work in that race and You're was fine. still fighting out all the way to the wire. Yeah, listen, you, you made this horse I couldn't believe it when you made him a horse watch and out of the gate after you found out he was privately purchased and sent to Southern California. I laughed at you then. <laughs> but you were right about him. Um, he was, listen, he was just a real underachiever and a big disappointment when he was on the East Coast. Um, the fact that he's really turned his career around, it's not that surprising that he's turned out to be a good handicap horse because, let's be honest, there's no good handicap horses out there. This horse is pretty good. Um, I also think, you know, he won the big cap by a nose. And then he got beat in a really tight photo, uh, tight race last time, too. I don't think this horse really wants to go a mile and a quarter, Dan. You know, that's McKinsey's big excuse for when this horse beat him in the big cap. This horse, I don't think, really wants a mile and a quarter either. This is a way better distance for him. You know, I think he's the horse to beat in here. Do I want a short price on him? Am I going to bet him to win at a short price? No, but I'm using this horse. It's kind of put up a shut up time, though. He's got to prove he can yeah, do he it on the East Coast race. against good horses. He looks like he can sit behind the pace, and he has sat in one in the past. I thought he just had to do a lot of work early. Joel Rosario, I don't think, wanted to be taken back behind those three horses. We kind of sent him on through to okay. push that long shot. Didn't he made the front, and uh, listen, Vino Rosso Didn't ran Vino down. Vino Rosso do a lot of work in that race, too, though? Oh, he he started, and he was giving ground as well. Wide trip, but know. he was kind of pressuring well, I can't him on get the outside. Horse that I, I thought it was a fast pace. Yeah. I thought he ran well. I, I think he earned the 105, and if he runs that race, yeah, obviously, it's going to be, be tough. tough. Tenfold is the number seven in this race, and he is a horse that can stay close, even if the pace is fast. Yeah. Now, last time out, the pace was really fast in the grade three Pimlico special. He dropped all the way back, and he came with a run. This is a horse, I believe, that is really coming into his own. I believe he has improved with blinkers. There was always buzz about him. I mean, you won the Jim Dandy last year, for goodness sake, beating the aforementioned Vino Rosso. I think there's still more to come for Tenfold. That's how I look at him, too. He was one of those three-year-olds. They First of all, they threw a lot at him very early on as a three-year-old, and I thought he stood up to it pretty well. His Jim Dandy um, wasn't impressive. I think in retrospect, it was maybe a sign in that race that he might have been calling out for a little bit of a break in his racing because he, it looked like he was going to win very easily. And then if you remember, he got to drift in. He might have been in the 10 path by the time they got to the wire there. Instead of finishing that race off, he was just drifting way out. He didn't run his race in the Travers. I like the way that he's come back, and I liked his win last time. You know what? The pace was there for him going a little longer. He got a very confident ride from Rafael Santana. He saved all the ground, and then once they came to the stretch, he put him between horses. This horse did the rest. I liked that win from him last time. I just think in only his fourth lifetime start last year, he was beaten a length. Yeah, a crazy. triple crown winner. Justified, this will be his fourth start of the layoff. Getting back to gift box real quick, here's a formulator fact for mm. John Sadler. Past couple of years, older horses going second off the layoff in graded stakes dirt routes. 56% winners, a 619 ROI. It helps when you have horses like Accelerate in in your barn. We move on to the eight, King Zachary. And I know that uh, Dale Romans like King Zachary a lot. He won the Matt Wynn last year very, very easily over kind of a weak field. And yep. after that, he just really never improved off that performance. First time for Grand Motion, he caught Thirst to Life. And I think that was probably just a prep race for this. But that being said, he's another horse that really has to find his best. Yeah, I agree with that. There's something there with this yeah. horse. He wasn't up for the, you know, the top three-year-old races last year, but he deserved his chance in those races. He wasn't up for it. Um, I don't really care about his race last time. He was sort of wide, never really got involved, but he did get third in there. I think he'll do better. Um, as time goes on, I just don't really like him in this race. I think Tom's day toss always dangerous whenever you can get him back without a layoff. And it's nice to see him going second off the layoff without a layoff line. He's six years old. He's only run 11 times. We know when he's on his best, he is brilliant. I thought that he just really hated the sealed sloppy track at Gulfstream. It didn't look yeah, like he handled it at all and was just climbing around and did nothing. Last time out in the Alley Sheba, I thought all in all, he got a good trip. McKenzie is just a better horse than he is. 
is. The mile and an eighth is very good for him, and I think he can yeah. sit just off that Sunland uh, Derby winner and maybe get the jump on everybody turning into the stretch. I don't disagree with any of that stuff. Uh, you know, he was just no match for McKinsey last time. I actually felt like he was a good second in that race. That was a pretty good performance for this horse. He's got that positional speed where I think he'll be forward, but he doesn't need to be up there contesting the pace. This horse is dangerous in here. Quip comes back off a two-month layoff, but in my estimation, I think he's the kind of horse that actually needs a little bit of time between his races. Hmm. I think he puts a lot of effort into his races. I thought he was good in the house, hope, in his first start off the long layup, just considering that Prince Lucky was awesome at Gulfstream over the winter, and he was kind of down yeah. towards the inside. He angled out. It just looked like a prep race for the Oaklawn Handicap. Now, it looked like he was done turning into the stretch of yeah. the Oaklawn Handicap. Yeah. He gutted it out to win a very tight photo over Lone Sailor, who has a habit of losing those tight photos. But all in all, this horse has nice tactical speed. A mile and an eighth, I don't think is a problem for him. I think he's at 10 to 1, you can yeah. play this horse. Yeah, at a, at a price like that, I, I wouldn't be too hard on him. It was a new top figure, second off the layoff. And he was, you know, he was basically all potential last year. Yeah. And he's the kind of horse who could just be really headed the right way right now, as we've already sort of touched on. It's not like there are a bunch of killers in this handicap division. This horse could take a step forward in here. How many times have we said, you know, when Mike Maker claims a horse, especially for a pretty good sum of money, you got to watch out? And he took exulting from Kieran and Godolphin for 62.5, two starts back, wheeled him back in a quarter of a million dollar race, and lo and behold, the horse scores with a career best buyer speed figure. Now, Maker usually does this with turf horses. Yeah. Exulting is a really good dirt horse. Yep. He still has to improve, though, to beat this. This is just such a tough yeah. field in the fall. Listen, I've always He's liked nice this horse. horse. I love this horse. He had his, you know, don't be too discouraged by his overall record, because there was a point early in his career where he was just his own worst enemy every time. He would not break from the gate. He was a real head quick case and hard horse to ride, but he's really figured all that stuff out, and he's much better now. Um, this is probably too tough for him. The mile and eighth really isn't his best distance. He's really more of a miler type horse, but this horse is good. Lost in the shuffle of Justify and Accelerate's tremendous campaigns in 2018 was the fact that Yoshida was a grade one winner on both turf and dirt. That's he true. won the Woodward when he got just a beautiful setup, a setup that could be similar That's in true. the Stephen Foster. Again, the Pegasus uh, World Cup turf, yielding turf course. I thought he ran okay in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah. effort. And Dubai, it's Dubai. You know, some horses just like it. His running style really doesn't really play to that track. Here's a Bill Mott formulator fact, and this does include some horses coming back from Dubai. Over the past three years, older horses getting Lasix back on, 33%, a $3.49 ROI. He'll be running late. My question to you is, is he, even with the grade one wins, yeah. is he more reputation than performance on the track? Uh, um, boy, that's a tough question. I, I don't know if he is. I mean, he's he's a good horse. Um, does he have a, a too big of a reputation? I don't know. I don't think that he has like some kind of huge reputation where people think he's better than he actually is. He is what he is. He's really good on both surfaces. I'll I'll be honest. I didn't like him in the Woodward. And, you know, after he won that race with a big pace in front of him, I was like, you know, all right, he took advantage a little bit. He almost won me over in his Breeders' Cup. I mean, he ran well that day. He does handle dirt just fine. This race could set up well for him. He's another horse. I look at him a lot like I do gift box in this race. I'm not going to be surprised when he wins. It's it's easy, the race that he could win. I wouldn't bet him at too short of a price, but I'd probably want to try and use him somewhere in the multis if I could. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Stephen Foster this year. You're going with tenfold again. This horse showed a great amount in a short amount of time last year as a three-year-old. It appears he is bigger, he is stronger, and he he is going to get pace. And this is, I believe, his third star as a four-year-old. Yeah. He's all improvement. Yeah, I mean, I liked his last race a lot. I think he is headed the right way. This is just one of those races where, not that I'm way against the favorites, and I'm not way against gift box in here, but I don't love that horse. And I didn't really want to bet him at a short price. I want to try, I want to try and beat him, and I'll try and do it with time. I do think gift box is going to work out a good trip in mid-pack, and I do like him cutting back uh, a furlong, as we discussed. I think he's going to be very prominent turning into the stretch, and we're going to find out if he's going to be a player in this division, because I think it's kind of a race he has to win in order to show that he belongs in races at Saratoga or the Pacific Classic in the summertime. Mike's going 7-4-6-5, throwing Seeking the Soul in there. Put, just put a ring around I him. I can't believe Throwing it. him out. 6-12, 10, four. and 9. Like what is fifth, going on? Fifth pick. What is going on? In the grade 2, Stephen Foster is the feature on a fantastic Saturday evening of racing at Churchill Downs. Remember to get your Breeders' Cup swag, if you will, with your DRF 
two-pack. That's the code when you go to breederscupshop.com, and if you spend over $30, you get two free Breeders' Cup Santini glasses. They're very stylish, aren't they, Mike? Yeah, we could put them on the desk here, maybe. 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 maybe they'll <laughs> give them for, for free. Can we get some? For free? As no. long as there's Probably. something in them. Right. Approximate post time for the Stephen Foster is 947 Eastern. Best of luck.